Well, it is the end of 2019 and it's time for us to take a rewind and look at the best pocket knives that I tested out and reviewed this year. Well, that's right, folks. We've been doing this for a long time now. At the end of every year, I take a look at all the pocket knives that I tested from January 1st, 2019 through to the moment that this video is being produced, and I weigh the pros and cons of each, which one's connected with me, maybe because of value, maybe because of an update model compared to an older model, different things like that, and I give you the best of the best, the cream of the crop. And we've looked at some great pocket knives, so just because it's not on this list doesn't mean it's not good, but this is the ones that have risen above of the rest and are just to die for. So that's what I want to share with you today in this video and that's what we're going to look at today. And throughout this video I just want to remind you about the hyperlinks that we have for you below over to GP Knives, Blade HQ, Amazon. We appreciate when you purchase through those hyperlinks that we offer to you. If one of these knives stands out to you, maybe you've been contemplating it all year round and now seeing it in this video just kind of sets it over the edge for you or maybe you didn't even know about a particular blade and now this really puts it on the map. We appreciate when you purchase through those hyperlinks and all the other ones that we have for you, regardless if it's to Knock Around Sunglass Company, Mystery Ranch, 511. We have a lot down there, and we appreciate it when you make your gear purchasing decisions whenever you find something that really connects with you when you use those hyperlinks. So with that, guys, let's go ahead and jump to it and check out this list of the best pocket knives of 2019. All right, we're gonna kind of go through the year here. And so one of the first out of the gate that has to make these best pocket knives of 2019 is the Steel Wheel Piercer. Uh, I really connected with this knife. It was nice to see that they were coming out with different versions of the same knife, really giving you options on what you connect with more, what you like more. The styling was awesome. Uh, giving you kind of the style of a self-defense tool, but um, giving you all the capability of a great EDC knife at the same time. Uh, using D2 steel that Steel Wheel has been using for quite a while, uh, which is a good steel. They know how to heat treat it well. I've never had any issues with their steel. Um, really had a good tip to pierce obviously the name wide leaf shaped blade uh, bronze bushings and the cool thing that they have two different price points two different um, locking mechanisms basically they have their liner lock with full g10 handle those are usually going around like 65 to 70 and then for 90 bucks you can get the same knife but it has a titanium um, frame lock so if you like frame locks a little bit more and they both weigh about the same they're under four ounces uh, just over uh, three inches at 3.25 on the blade length uh, and just really well designed ambidextrous uh, the pocket clip really connected with me. There was really nothing with either of these designs that didn't connect with me. Uh, and, you know, be, uh, I believe I said, uh, let's see, it's about 110, excuse me, um, $110 for the titanium and about 65 to 70 for the um, frame lock version. So really cool blade, really connected me with me and has kind of a crossing capability. If you're looking for something a little more, you know what you're doing, self-defense role, and that's something that you're trained in and know what you're doing. Uh, or if you're looking for something that's more EDC, it's cross capable and just really good fit and finish, really good lines and connects with me on a visual and performance level. Sometimes a knife comes along that the original version doesn't really connect with me, but then they do a tweak on that exact same design and it starts to really connect with me. And that is the case with the Spyderco Para 3 and particularly the Para 3 Lightweight. I reviewed the Para 3, which is their G10 version, and it was good. It was okay. Uh, it didn't really connect with me. I had enough other spider codes that it just kind of felt a little redundant. There were aspects to it that is kind of square with a smaller handle. The pocket clip is their more standard standoff uh, type of pocket clip that rides high. And for the design, I wanted something that was a little more ergonomic, lighter weight, and had a deep ride pocket clip. Well, early this year, I believe, or mid this year, uh, 2019, they released the lightweight version of the Para 3. And it came in at under $100, usually around 90 to 95 bucks. Uh, they did their glass reinforced nylon um, handles that they do with a lot of their blades. I love it on my Manix 2 lightweight. Uh, and they contoured all of the angles. So it actually even has better contouring than my Manix 2 lightweight. So it, and it has better contouring and ergonomics than the original Para 3. So it's lighter weight, still has the really cool compression lock, uh, the awesome Spyderco blade shape, but then they put their um, 
wire pocket clip, which is a deep ride pocket clip, ambidextrous, that I love. I love it on my Manix 2. It's one of my favorite pocket clips around that any manufacturer produces. And this, they, they put it on this. And then to boot, they put an upgraded steel from old CTS BD1. They now do CTS BD1N with edge testing and, and other um, things. It basically is way better than just BD1 steel in edge retention that like the original Manix uh, 2 lightweight had. Uh, but it actually surpasses like VG10 that's on a Delica 4. So when you look at the blade steel, the price point, the uh, upgraded handle ergonomics and the lightweight loop over pocket clip with their wire uh, construction, it just really, really connected with me and is a really fun, fast blade to use. It's a great EDC knife that's gonna be lightweight and still come in at under $100 and has to make this list. Next up was the Cold Steel Voyager full size and their updated version with AUS-10 A steel. Uh, so this is an upgrade over OS-8 steel. And what I discovered through my testing and not only seeing uh, it with what I was doing, but also several other YouTubers on, on uh, YouTube, that the AUS-10 steel is a really good steel, man. I mean, it's competitive with, uh, and actually surpasses VG10, and is competitive with even um, kind of in the uh, 154CM to S30V realm. So it's a really good steel that they upgraded the Voyager. And I never reviewed uh, the full-size Voyager. It's been around for a very long time. It's a, a great price at $50. You're getting a killer knife is usually what it goes for. I think I paid between 15 and 60 bucks for it. It has a blade shape that just really connects with me. Full flat grind with a little bit of a clip on it. You can get different styles as well. You can get Tanto and different things like that. Serrated, full serrated, I believe. Um, you're getting the triad locking system, which I argue is the, if not one of the strongest locking mechanisms on the market. You're getting ambidextrous features uh, for the size of it. You get a very big full handle that really fills out the hand well. Obviously being a little bit of a drawback that's pretty bulky in your pocket, but if that's something you don't mind. For the price, it's kind of like a budget-friendly Recon 1, Cold Steel Recon 1. I mean, it's basically what you're getting with a really good steel now. You're getting that OS 10 is really, really um, capable, holds a much better edge, is rather easy to resharpen than a lot of other stuff that is coming in at that price point of $50 to $60. You're looking at maybe some D2. Um, otherwise, you're looking at a lot of companies are still doing OS 8. Or maybe if you're lucky, you can get some VG10 out there. This surpasses those steels and is a stainless steel to boot. So uh, it's a really, really good knife and hits a great budget and has a lot of performance capabilities, great traction for harder use, good ergonomics for long, uh, long use, and then the toughness and durability for very, very hard use. Uh, so it's a great blade and I was super happy with it. And there's lots of size options, blade options. So basically you can f pick your flavor, your size, your blade shape, and you're gonna fall in love with the Voyager. All right, the icing on the cake. Wow, was I impressed with this blade. It's a, it's a very unique blade. Uh, this is the ZT0609. Uh, um, this is a RJ Martin design that Zero Tarlon has produced. Now what's really cool about this blade is that you're getting CPM 20 CV steel, very premium steel. It's gonna hold an edge for a long, long time. Uh, it's pretty easy on a ceramic rod to tune up. It comes with the their ball bearing system, so you're getting a super smooth deployment. The blade shape is amazing. The titanium with the bronze coating handle is awesome. It has such intricacy. Uh, it's a frame lock. It, it really, really connects, and it's just a beautiful piece. I really had to save up for this um, knife. I, I went back and forth. I think I kept it in my cart for like a day. Like, okay. For me, a pocket knife over $200, I don't have too many of those, you know, and so I definitely like was back and forth and back and forth, and I finally pulled the trigger, and I was so glad that I did. This is an elegant piece that's really good for everyday carry. Uh, it's slim, it's sleek, it still fills out the hand well, and the blade shape really is a great slicer, and it's just, it's gorgeous. It's just a beautiful, so if you like art and you like your knife to be an art piece, but still be, you know, very functional, zero tolerance, you know, having good... Um, a strong reliability, 
Uh, you know, those type of things, I mean, it really connects. It's lightweight at 3.3 ounces. So it's a great everyday carry knife. There've been some other options and, you know, different things that come and go, different blade steels and color combinations and stuff. Um, they usually go between about 200 and 260. It's a big kind of flux, just depends on where you pick it up, where you find it, different things like that. So, I mean, it's gonna cost you, but wow, was I glad that I pulled the trigger on this. And this is, of all the knives I've ever owned, one of my favorite knives of all time. If you were asking me like, what are the best knives of all time in your collection for pocket knives this would definitely be in the list uh, and so i would definitely recommend this knife if you got the money you like this styling uh, it, to me it was absolutely uh, worthwhile and i'm glad i dropped the the money on it and tops out our best pocket knives of 2019. well folks there you have it i hope you've enjoyed this video i just happen to be carrying the para 3 today as I'm wrapping up this video for you. It is a great knife and all the ones that you saw today just have really connected with me. I hope that this video has just been fun, entertaining, but then showing you why these have such a connection to me and that I connect with these blades and why they make this best of list. Love to hear your guys' comments below, any questions that you may have, uh, I'll answer below in the community that we have here at Gideon's Tactical will do the same and help you out with any last questions before you, you know, decide if there's something that you wanted to pursue after. I invite you to subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Check out the other video popping up or throwing up content like this every single week. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.